Welcome to Healthy Minds. I'm Dr. Jeff Borenstein. Everyone is touched by psychiatric conditions, either themselves or a loved one. Do not suffer in silence. With help, there is hope. Today on Healthy Minds, if somebody's thinking of hurting themselves and maybe actively doing so, after they get over the hump of that period of time, people are happy and thankful yeah. that they didn't actually take action on that thought. That's right. Almost always that person says, you saved my life. Thank you for being there for me. I wouldn't have made it through that moment without you. And of course they're talking about our crisis counselors. Because right. often when people do have thoughts of suicide and they may have depression or anxiety or some other mm -hmm. treatable psychiatric condition, but in the heat of the moment, getting through that moment really can save the life. That's the beauty of crisis counseling, right? We help people in the moment when they're in crisis. That's today on Healthy Minds. This program is brought to you in part by the American Psychiatric Association Foundation, the John and Polly Sparks Foundation, and the New York State Office of Mental Health. Welcome to Healthy Minds. I'm Dr. Jeff Borenstein. What do you do if you're in a crisis? You may reach out to family, friends, professionals, but what else is available? Today I speak with Ashley Womble, the head of communications for Crisis Text Line. Ashley, welcome to Healthy Minds. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. So what happens when someone texts Crisis Text Line? When someone texts 741-741, they'll get a text back. It will appear on their phone just like a text from their mom or their best friend might. There's no special app that you need. The text will say, you've texted Crisis Text Line and we're finding someone to text you back. Um, then the person, a counselor, a crisis counselor will text and say, I'm Ashley, I'm here to help. What made you want to text in today? Then the texter and the crisis counselor will have a conversation. The crisis counselor will, um, will help them explore their reasons for texting, right? Sometimes they may um, know exactly what's going on or sometimes they just may feel that they're in a panic and need uh, a little help exploring those issues. Then the crisis counselor will help them come up with some coping tips and perhaps a safety plan to get through um, that moment of crisis. And all of this interaction is back and forth with texting? That's correct. Yeah, it's 100% um, on the texter's phone. So I want to get to the crisis plan. Tell me what that may entail. Sure. So one thing that's really important that Crisis Text Line does um, is called our always ask policy. We always ask if someone is thinking about ending their life. It may seem a little odd when someone texts in because they're really struggling with their algebra midterm, right? Which is a common thing. B people have a lot of stress and anxiety around tests. They may think it's, you know, it's algebra, I just can't do it, I'm worthless, right? Feelings of worthlessness, though, are usually an indication that there's something else going on, right? It's not just algebra. So we've learned that um, if we always ask people if they're thinking about ending their life, that they're more likely to um, come up with a, a safety plan that will help them through their um, crisis. So one important point, which is, is a common misperception, that asking about suicidal thoughts or plans may put the person at greater risk, may give them the idea when we know and research has shown that's it's good to ask. That's absolutely right. It's good to ask. And we found through our research and our, um, through our data collection that it actually matters how you ask. We use what we like to call an expression of care method. So for example, that texter who is struggling with their, um, with anxiety and um, feelings of worthlessness because of a algebra exam, if I was texting that person as a crisis counselor, I would say, sometimes when people are feeling worthless, they have thoughts of ending their life. I wanna ask, are you feeling that way? That lets the texter know that it's okay to say, yeah, actually I am. We found that that's much more successful than saying, I'm sorry, but 
I have to ask, are you thinking about killing yourself? Um, because that really makes the, the texter feel that it might be a burden if they mention that they're having those thoughts. So it puts it into the context of these things can happen. Yes. And don't be shy about discussing it. And it's okay it. to talk about it. If the texter says, yeah, actually, I am thinking about this, then we do a um, risk assessment. And the first question would be, do you have thoughts? And if the answer is yes, then we say, do you have a plan? Have you given thought to how you might do this? If they say, yes, in fact, I thought I would swallow a bunch of my dad's pills, then we would say, do you have those pills available? We would try to find out if there's a method. If there is, um, then we, we proceed and we, we ask if they have a, you know, a timeline, right? If they say, I'm thinking about taking my dad's pills tonight, then we know that that texter is in imminent risk. And if the texter is unable to, to say that they're going to be safe, we do um, about 30 times a day, we end up calling 911 um, to perform an active rescue on the texter. So if the person is calling, reaching for help, mm -hmm. but really is at a point that they may actually be in danger of harming themselves, then you'll dial nine, you'll get 911 to go and really save them. That's right, and I really want to, um, to call out that I mentioned 30 times a day, we have about 3,000 um, texters a day, so that's only 1% of the time we are gonna be reaching out um, for 911. Most 99% of the time, we're able to de-escalate, and even um, when the person says, yes, I am thinking about it, I have a plan, we're usually able to de-escalate. When there's a need to call 911 because of an emergency, walk us through exactly what happens on your end and then what happens to the person who's in the emergency. Sure. Um, so we want to help the texter right, get to that cool calm. If we're unable to do that, we oftentimes do let the, the, the texter know we'd like to send some help to you directly. There may be times in which we feel that um, it's better to not let the texter know. It really is based on the conversation and um, even though we do do this every day, I can't say that there is a typical conversation, right? Um, because people do text us for a number of different types of crises. So, um, what the counselor sees, though, once a once the uh, 911, once our the um, the supervisor has called 911, we have something that we just completely ripped off from Domino's Pizza. Um, and Domino's Pizza knows about it and they're very happy. Um, we have something called a pizza tracker. And because if you've ever ordered pizza from Domino's, you know that you, um, as soon as you place your order, they have um, something that pops up on your screen that says, you know, um, Laura is, is, you know, throwing the dough in the air and Samuel is putting your pepperonis on. We feel that if you should know that much information about your pizza, you should certainly get that much information um, whenever you're trying to save someone's life. So we have created um, a pizza tracker for our crisis counselors to help them understand what the process is um, whenever the police have, have been onto the scene and when the texter has been, um, has received emergency services. So that the person who's offering help through texting finds out that the person they're helping has received that emergency care and is on the path towards That's help. correct, that's correct. And that is the end there for us. Um, we, all of our conversations, um, we, we end, and we never follow up. We don't, we don't reach out to people actively and say, hey, you texted in about um, being bullied at school yesterday. How's today going? That's not what we do. We're there, really um, there for people when they want to come to contact us. Um, so we're, we're very different than your mom and your best friend and your therapist in that regard. Um, and whenever there is a active rescue, we know when the active rescue is complete, but we don't know what happens after that. And an important point is if somebody's thinking of hurting themselves and maybe actively sure. doing so, after they get over the hump of that period of time with help, um, people are happy and thankful yeah. that they didn't actually take action on that thought. 
That's right. And we have, after the conversation, texters are invited to fill out a post conversation survey, right? Or to share, um, to share something with the crisis counselor. And I would say um, almost always that person says, you saved my life. Thank you for being there for me. I wouldn't have made it through that moment without you. And of course, they're talking about our crisis counselors. Because right. often when people do have thoughts of suicide, and they may have depression or anxiety or some other mm -hmm. treatable psychiatric condition, but in the heat of the moment, getting through that moment really can save the life. Yeah, that's really what matters. And that's, what the, be that's the beauty of crisis counseling, right? We help people in the moment when they're in crisis. So if you are struggling with anxiety or depression, it's a great idea to have a psychiatrist that you can talk to, but you may not be able to talk to your psychiatrist in that moment of crisis. And so that's why it's so great that we have Crisis Text Line because it's with you all the time. If you There's have your phone available with you, that's right. If you have your phone with you, you can reach us. I want to ask you, how did you get involved in Crisis Text Line? What brought you to that? Yeah, um, I was. Um, like most people, I didn't know anything about mental health at all. Um, didn't even think I even had mental health, right? Um, or I certainly didn't know anything about mental illness until my brother, who was about nine, is nine years younger than me, um, um, was diagnosed with schizophrenia. And he, his schizo schizophrenia is very serious mental illness, and it was very serious for him. Um, I tried very hard to help him get help. Uh, for that, and he, like many people with schizophrenia, was unable to accept um, treatment. So he was hospitalized a number of times and still um, never, never once swallowed even one pill that I really believe would have brought him a lot of, um, a lot of help. You know, um, certainly when you have schizophrenia, you're in it for the long haul. Um, it's a very serious illness. And, but there's treatment available and it, it works. Um, my brother, unfortunately, was never able to have, to accept treatment, that medication. Sometimes people may be paranoid and afraid of getting the treatment. Yes, he believed that um, the treatment was a conspiracy because um, he, he did have paranoia as well. Um, he ultimately did end his life. Um, he was 21 years old, which is, was about two years after he started developing schizophrenia. And um, I knew that I wanted to help other people uh, not go through what I had gone through. I wanted to prevent suicide, and I also wanted people to know that mental illness is common, but it's treatable. I'm sorry for your family's well, loss. Thank you. Um, but thank you for what you're doing to help others so other families don't sure. have to have such a tragic loss. Well, of course. Um, I. Um, find it very fulfilling and I also find um, there's a major community of people who do this work who have similar stories so I know that like everyone I'm not alone. I want to ask you about the people who are responding to the texts. Mm -hmm. What type of training do they receive? How does it work? I'm really glad you asked that question because we like to think that our crisis counselors Actually, we know that our crisis counselors are the greatest people in the world. Um, since we have, um, since this, in the six years that Crisis Text Line has been running, we have trained more than 22,000 people to be crisis counselors. All you need in order to be a crisis counselor is empathy and a Wi-Fi and a laptop. Um, we will do the um, offer if you take the if you go through the application and there's a background check. Um, we will, you will enter and you pass the background check. You will enter our training program. The training program is anywhere between two weeks intensive and six weeks um, is, the, is, the regular, is the regular session. It's about 35 hours of online training. You'll learn um, in training what a lot of people learn in social work school, um, but it'll be you know, really very focused on helping texters who are in crisis. So it's a little, um, it's a crash course, and the training doesn't end there. Once, once a crisis counselor has completed those 35 hours of training, and I will say that it's easier to get into some colleges than it is to get through our, um, our crisis counselor training. It's not, you know, it's not, um, 
it, it does take commitment and uh, willingness to improve. It's a serious responsibility serious to be able to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in training, you're assigned a coach and the coach stays with you for your entire time that you're a crisis counselor and they're always helping you improve. So it's really that willingness to learn about issues you may never have thought about um, is, part, is an important part of being a crisis counselor. So the people may be at home and then the texts get sort of pushed in one direction or another so that there's always somebody available to answer. Yes, that's right. So actually all of our crisis counselors are at home and I'm a crisis counselor as well. And um, I go into the crisis text line office during the day, but then in the mornings, typically for me, is when I'm on the platform, I do that remotely. Um, it's, it's great because you can volunteer um, your time to save someone's life in your pajamas while you're having you know, a, a cup of coffee or, or ice cream. Um, and we really um, encourage people to take this opportunity to volunteer. I think especially with the, so much going on in the world, um, people want to find a way to give back. Traditionally, you've had, if you wanted to volunteer somewhere, you had to be um, able to work in a city from nine to five. And quite frankly, that's not when Americans need help always, and that's not when people are able to, not everyone is able to volunteer that time. When, when's the typical time that people reach out for help? Well, you're probably not surprised to learn that it's at night. Um, so we do have a little bit of a surge during the school year, after school hours, um, really that out, you know, between three and six, we see a little surge in traffic, but really things get, um, we get a lot more volume, between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. One of the things that's really unique about Crisis Tax Line is that we have um, an algorithm that has helped us stack rank our queue so that it works sort of like a hospital emergency room. Based on the words, you're able to triage an emergency. We, exactly. We have a lot of really smart engineers um, and data scientists who have um, made it possible for us to to stack rank the RQ so that we can help people as quickly as we can based on their, their risk. When people reach out, it's anonymous, so they have confidentiality in terms of the outreach. Yes, that's correct. So um, one of the unique things about, about texting um, is if I was texting someone, no one hears what I'm saying, right? They could possibly look over my shoulder, but there's, um, it's a really great way to have a conversation quietly. And that's very helpful when you're in crisis, particularly um, if you're in a, um, an abusive setting, right? Um, you, you may be afraid to call because you don't want anyone to hear your voice. It's also really helpful if you're in school and you're in that algebra class and you're having that panic attack. If you're able to text in right then, we can help you. One of the things that you're able to do is because of the large number of people reaching out for help, collect data about that and sort of get the lay of the land from a public health perspective. I'd like you to tell us a little bit about that information that you've been gathering. Whenever you text someone, you have, it's all words, right? It's so it, um, it may take a human a little bit of time to read, but it takes a computer no time to read it all. And with um, help of our really, really intelligent um, data scientists and engineers, we can aggregate the data and anonymize it and then share it back with the community. On Crisis Text Line, you can find out what people are texting about in your area. You can search, for example, I'm from Texas, and so if I wanted to know what people are texting about in Texas, I can search for that. I could also find out if um, what people are, what are people under the age of 18 texting, right? What are those issues? If I really want to find out um, what's going on with eating disorders now, right? People who are dealing with eating disorders, what are the words that they're using when they text in? We have, um, we're able to share that information on crisistrends.org. And the goal there is not just to help, you know, um, not just random facts, right? We really want it, we really want uh, policymakers and educators and mental health professionals and quite frankly, all health professionals to take this information and use it to improve their services. So for example, if you, one thing we found is that people with eating disorders 
tend to text us more on Mondays. So Mondays is a tougher day for people who are struggling with eating disorders. So that might be something that if you're a nutritionist, um, you could plan to have more appointments on Monday, right? Or if you are running a school cafeteria, maybe you want to make sure that there are lots of options on Mondays that might be helpful for people who are struggling with eating disorders. And extra support available. And extra for, support for available, absolutely. Um, we found that people who are struggling with substance use disorders, they're, they reach out very early in the morning, but not just, a, not not necessarily what we would consider the middle of the night, but at like it's 6 a.m. So if you're running a methadone clinic, it'd be really important for you to have hours, um, you know, beginning very early in the morning, because that's when we find people are reaching out for support. It's very useful information. It's very useful, and we are really hoping that um, that people use it. You know, and and we in fact we we have had governors who've who've um, looked in to find out what are the key issues in their state. So um, suicide suicide is a major um, issue that really um, is taking far too many lives in our country. And there are certain states where suicide, um, suicidal ideation is more prevalent. And so we're, we've been very fortunate that some governors have reached out to us and said, you know, this is really information, great information. I'm going to build a, a, a public service announcement around this, or I'm really going to focus on educating people in my state about this issue. How have people found out about Crisis Text Line? What's the way that you get the word out about this important resource? Crisis Text Line has a really, is such an, such an innovative and important resource that in the very beginning we did almost nothing to get the word out. In fact, when Crisis Text Line launched, it launched in El Paso and Chicago and um, really just through um, grassroots marketing. We had some stickers, um, there were, you know, a few um, a few marketing, small marketing pushes in those areas. And within four months, we were receiving texts from every area code in the United States. And that all we did was a little bit of grassroots marketing in El Paso and Chicago. Um, because the, the uh, need really, really spread and people were um, just so eager to reach out. Today, we're trying to let everyone know about Crisis Text Line because we have the capacity, thanks to our crisis counselors who are volunteers, um, to answer many more texts than we're getting. The people in my generation are used to speaking on the phone. Sure. People in the younger generation may occasionally speak on a phone, but really they're used to texting. That's What's right. the demographics age-wise of the people who make use of the crisis text line. So 75% of our texters are under the age of 25. So it does skew very young. 95% uh, are under the age of 35. We do have people texting in from all ages, but you're right that people who are younger are more likely to text. And um, when people are reaching out for, when people are in crisis and they're reaching out for support, that's the hardest thing to do. And so we want to make it easy for them to get help. And, um, and so anyone who, who, who finds text an easier method, and we certainly want to be there for them. And it's not just younger people. Um, people who are deaf also uh, reach out to Crisis Text Line. And people who are in rural areas that may be able to call, but may not know, have any resources locally that are available um, really find texting useful. If somebody's watching right now and they are anxious or depressed, really at wit's end, mm -hmm. tell them what to do. Text 741-741 and you'll be connected with a crisis counselor. And I think there's, um, it's never a bad idea to text in and just say, hey, is this real? Does this work? It's important to find it out for yourself so that when you are in crisis, you can have the number ready and hopefully saved in your phone. So any person, any time, for any reason, mm -hmm. big or small. That's right. We're there for you in the United States, 741-741. We're also in Canada and the UK. And within the next three years, we plan to be in 15 countries. Wonderful. Ashley, I want to thank you for joining us. And thank you for the work that you're doing to help so many people around the world. Well, thank you so much for having me. And thank you for your work as well. If you're experiencing a crisis 
you're not alone. You can reach out to family, friends, professionals, but also there are other resources available, such as Crisis Text Line. Remember, with help, there is hope. Do not suffer in silence. With help, there is hope. This program is brought to you in part by the American Psychiatric Association Foundation, the John and Polly Sparks Foundation, and the New York State Office of Mental Health. Remember, with help, there is hope. Until next time, I'm Dr. Jeff Borenstein.